Water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. This is the Canada, U.S., Columbia Basin Water Negotiations. Hello, uh, this is uh, I Go Travel uh, with Don Barnett. Uh, we've made uh, about six of, uh, short videos on the Columbia Basin uh, water area. Uh, three on the Columbia Basin area itself and uh, three on uh, one of the big basins called the Kukanusa. And they're on my website. Uh, you can see those uh, because negotiations with the U.S. are coming up. And uh, so in this video, I thought that uh, we'd do a little role play of the, the negotiators, the American and the Canadian negotiators. And my cameraman has offered to play the role of one of the negotiators. Uh, so, uh, m Mr. Cameraman up there, uh, what, what do you want to do? Uh, do you want to be the uh, American negotiator or the uh, Canadian negotiator? Oh, what's that? You want to be the American? Why? Because they always win. Oh, what do you mean? And I'm not smart enough to be an American negotiator. I'll be the Canadian. Well, uh, okay. Okay, uh, here I am. Uh, the negotiator for the U.S. of A. Uh, yeah, that's right, you know. Uh, you're not smart enough or tough enough to be a good negotiator. If you look at Canadian-American relations, uh, the Americans have come out on top almost every time. Well, uh, uh, maybe uh, we'll uh, be able to get a little bit better at uh, negotiating uh, things with uh, the U.S. Uh, after all, you know, there's not a lot of difference between uh, a Canadian and a, an American. Uh, well, uh, you know, I suppose uh, that is right. Uh, an American really is a Canadian uh, with uh, a gun and no health card. You know, uh, uh, actually the American uh, uh, side is better off uh, than Canadians. And uh, in which way uh, would uh, the U.S. be better off? Well, uh, for one thing, uh, Americans uh, have a lot better, uh, nicer neighbors uh, than Canadians have. Oh, oh, uh, all right, uh, where do you want to start on uh, this negotiation thing? Well, uh, we would like to start off by uh, thanking uh, the uh, uh, Tanaka people, First Nation people, uh, for uh, allowing us uh, on their land. Well, for crying out loud, uh, you know they ought to call Canada, Canada. You can't seem to do anything and get it going. Uh, you're living in the past. Uh, in the USA, we don't live in the past. We thank uh, two things. We thank God and we thank our country. We don't get mired down into the past. The past is the past. Uh, some was good and some was bad, but we've gone on uh, uh, Canada. You can't seem to get into the modern world. Okay, uh, let's get down to brass uh, tacks. Uh, uh, how would you like to start uh, the negotiations? There are uh, two words that we would like to uh, have uh, eliminated from these talks. They're inappropriate and unnecessary and uh, never were in date. One word is the word perpetuity. Uh, nothing lasts in perpetuity. Uh, we would not be having these new negotiations if uh, we were uh, living with the principle of perpetuity. So we would like that word taken out of the negotiations. 
There is one other term that we would like to see removed uh, from these negotiations, and that's the term Canadian entitlement. No one is entitled to anything, and the U.S. is not entitled to give away something it doesn't own in the first place. And it is a demeaning, derogatory uh, reference kind of a term. Uh, this is strictly a business deal over natural resources. Nothing more and nothing less. It is not a kind of a royalty entitlement that someone is giving to anyone else. If there's any entitlement here involved, it is the U.S. receiving all of this natural water from a Canadian source. So at any rate, let's remove the term Canadian entitlement. It is inappropriate and demeaning. Eliminate uh, both uh, these uh, negatively implied terms from any negotiations. As uh, part of our uh, opening statement from the USA, we would like to say that uh, the USA is a God-fearing nation. And if God had wanted uh, Canada to have the water, uh, he would have had the water flow north. But in the Columbia River, the water flows south into the U.S. as God so ordained. Uh, we have a historic uh, 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 principle called the Monroe Doctrine that says that the USA has the moral, God-given right to lay claim to lands and resources uh, within its uh, areas. And uh, we would like to uh, make it clear that uh, God runs the water south, not north. We would like to uh, keep a big picture perspective on these negotiations. We do not want to get uh, sidetracked into a small issue. You know, for example, the building of a weir or the uh, a donation of uh, a little bit of community money uh, to people uh, in various communities. We want a big picture uh, taken here. Finally, uh, my negotiating friend, we require respect for the fundamental principle of national integrity. Canada must avoid any agreement that uh, it cannot do things within its own country unless it acquires the okay from the U.S. The United States, for example, would not tolerate another country telling it what it can do and not do within the uh, territorial boundaries of its uh, territories. And similarly, Canada uh, must maintain the same uh, national integrity and uh, uh, have the re respect of, uh, of being able to make its own decisions. No other country should be telling uh, Canada, for example, uh, whether or not they can cut down trees in the riparian zones uh, of the uh, riverbanks of uh, rivers that run within its country. Uh, so then, uh, how would you like to uh, uh, start these negotiations uh, from your side? Uh, yes, sir, in any negotiation, you want to start off rough and tough. Uh, we already uh, uh, sounded the first blast. We told you, Canadians, we don't need this water. Uh, we don't need to renegotiate the Columbia Basin. Uh, we don't need it. Th that was meant to scare you. And I'm telling you, it worked. I know that uh, we come at this uh, matter uh, from uh, different perspectives. Perhaps from the American perspective, uh, it's all about water, water, water. Uh, but from the Canadian perspective, it's all about money, money, money. And uh, just uh, what are you thinking about uh, in terms of uh, money? There are uh, really eight areas uh, that need to be negotiated in regard to the water. Uh, the first four are uh, larger, more continuous uh, areas. Uh, the other four are important, just as important, but uh, not quite uh, up on the uh, priority scale. As, as, uh, so we'll uh, start at the, the uh, top four. Let's talk about those, and it all relates to money. The first one is flood control. Whoa, stop right there. 
Uh, we need to talk about flood control, number one. That was the very first uh, reason for uh, negotiating uh, these uh, reservoirs and dams that we've built on the Columbia system. Let's talk about flood control. And no, uh, we don't feel that it's necessary to talk about flood control anymore with negotiations. Not in a major or significant way, at least. Uh, flood control has already been controlled. Since when did you hear of a major flood damage from the waters flowing south on the Columbia River system? Uh, it has not happened. The dams have been built. The uh, waters are under control in terms of flooding. Uh, don't you think we should be talking about flood control? Uh, moving on with negotiations, uh, Canada needs to get uh, a greater uh, share of the huge monetary advantage uh, realized by uh, the United States uh, from this uh, Columbia Basin waters. And that major uh, monetary uh, advantage is seen in electrical power production. Uh, further, look at the uh, great monetary income from the inland ocean waterway created by the uh, Columbia River waters from Canada. This ocean waterway reaches all the way to Tri-Cities area of Washington, and thus far Canada has not received a single penny from this tremendous economic advantage enjoyed by the U.S. Uh, finally, down here at number four, consider the billions of dollars acquired uh, by the U.S. from orchard and agricultural production made possible by Columbia Basin Waters from Canada. The U.S. Uh, has yet to share with Canada a single dollar of this tremendous income. In the name of fairness and good neighbors, it is time to make an adjustment. How about the flood control? On uh, what basis uh, could we make an, uh, an adjustment? Uh, think about uh, this. Uh, while we look at uh, Libby Dam, the American dam that uh, floods and drains the Canadian uh, Kukanusa Reservoir each year like your uh, kitchen sink. And uh, just uh, look here how uh, Canadian-based uh, water contributes to the abundance of water near the mouth of the Columbia River and enables tremendous uh, U.S. Uh, money generation uh, from uh, both hydroelectric production and uh, ocean-going navigation that runs deep into the interior of the country. Here is a tourist's view, uh, another unpaid advantage enjoyed by the U.S. But beyond tourism, this also shows uh, an ocean freighter deep inland, uh, plying the deeper waters of the Columbia River. Deeper waters and year-around consistent waters, all made possible by the uh, storage dams and increased water flowing from Canada. Uh, here's a couple of pictures of the elevated bridges uh, along the Columbia River, so uh, ocean freighters uh, and uh, tugboats, as you see here, are able to uh, a sail up and down the lower end of the Columbia uh, in uh, the U.S. Again, no compensation under the old treaty agreement, uh, and the, this unfair situation must be corrected if the system is to continue working. Uh, let's uh, look at the proportion of Columbia Basin waters that flow from Canada into the U.S., Measured at the border, that figure is 37%. Therefore, it seems reasonable and fair to say that the tremendous economic advantage enjoyed by the U.S. should be paid at a 37% rate. 37% of the billions of dollars generated from Canadian source waters certainly needs to be negotiated. In all fairness, good neighbor, how does that sound?
I think we should be talking more about the flood control. It might help you get your mind off of flood control if you look at the Revelstoke where the Columbia River crosses the Trans-Canada Highway, the big bridge there. This is the uh, Revelstoke Dam and you can take a good highway north a ways up to Mica Dam, uh, which is another big dam uh, that stores water for the U.S. And uh, here's another thought for you. Uh, what is the value to the U.S. of all of this vast storage of water in Canada? I think we should be talking more about the flood control. Do you want to talk about floods? Well, then just take a look at this uh, flood of information. This chart is about the uh, electrical power produced in the Columbia Basin. The red circle represents the total U.S. electrical power produced in the whole country. And in the top left, it says about one-third of all U.S. power is produced in the Columbia Basin on the lines right here. Of this one-third that's produced in the Columbia Basin area, both on the American and Canadian sides, about 35 to 45 percent of that power comes from Canadian waters flowing south. And that 35 to 45 percent, uh, does that not relate to what I was saying earlier uh, in the video about uh, uh, the waters that flow south, about 37 percent. So we're right in the range of the 35 to 45 percent that uh, the U.S. ought to be paying for power uh, that is derived from the Canadian source. Uh, we have looked at the top part of the page, uh, so let's uh, talk about uh, the four items uh, for negotiation at the uh, lower part of this page. Uh, say, uh, just a minute, uh, you've got me a little uh, interested in Canada. Uh, what kind of water are you sending down to us? Uh, is it hard water or uh, soft water? Uh, oh, uh, it would be hard water. Uh, it's frozen into ice uh, for most of the year. Say, uh, you know another thing that I heard? Uh, I heard that you got a city up there. Uh, uh, wild animals roam the streets. Uh, wild uh, wildcats and uh, uh, cougars and uh, mountain lions. Uh, is that right? Oh, uh, that city, eh? Uh, you betcha. Uh, we got a city like that. Uh, we call it... Uh, Vancouver. Uh, yeah, you know, I heard uh, that uh, you had nothing but uh, snow and ice uh, up there in Canada. But I also heard uh, that you got these uh, great big animals. Uh, uh, I think they're called moose -quitos. Oh, yeah. Hey, um, uh, the Vancouver hockey team is called the Canucks. The Vancouver Canucks. And you know, uh, we uh, had uh, in Canada here on the Atlantic side, uh, a big ship hit an iceberg and uh, sunk. It was called the Titanic. So I've got a question for you. What has the Titanic and the Vancouver Canucks got in common? Well, uh, you've got me thinking on that one. Uh, what would the uh, Vancouver Canucks and the Titanic have in common? They both looked good until they hit the ice. Uh, we better uh, get back on track here and uh, uh, let's uh, get back talking about uh, that uh, flood control. Flood control is already under control. Let's talk about uh, the other things that now need to be addressed. We talked uh, about the top four areas uh, and uh, 37%, remember, might take care a lot of a lot of the, the money situation. Look at uh, ecosystem improvement. This area has been a neglected uh, disaster. This disaster uh, ranges from salmon restoration to cross-border wildlife uh, movement and habitat. Uh, Cross-border uh, funding needs to be established for both the programs and the monitoring of clearly defined wildlife measures. 
also uh, take a look at uh, control of the dams on each side of the border. Water uh, in the uh, big uh, Canadian reservoirs, uh, these levels uh, fluctuate substantially, particularly in the Kukunusa Reservoir that is eventually drained totally dry each year. Uh, control of water held back and uh, let through by the dams on either side of the border has been an unacceptable domination by the U.S. side. Look at the uh, principles of the uh, way th uh, the dams are operated now. The current situation is absolutely unfair and unacceptable. Uh, look at the case of the Libby Dam down here on the American side where no foreign, meaning Canadian, jurisdiction is allowed. There's no input on when the water needs to be held back or let go by this dam. There is no Canadian input. In contrast, look at the other three dams in the Columbia River system, uh, where uh, there is at least nominally a joint committee between the U.S. and Canada, uh, where the U.S. is involved, the foreign country is involved in uh, uh, the operation of the dams. This inequity needs to be corrected. Make it the same. Either have no foreign influence in the operation of these dams, as indicated by this particular diagram, or Conversely, have the other country be involved in the operation of all of the dams. In other words, uh, on the Canadian dams, there would be joint, uh, that is, USA involvement in decisions about uh, the water flow through the dam. And the same would be true of the Libby Dam in Montana. Look at uh, number three here, about the resale of water. The increasing practice of reselling Canadian-based uh, water and electric power by Washington to drought-threatened states like uh, California and Arizona must be addressed in a new negotiation treaty. Uh, here is uh, one of several huge dams on the Columbia River on the U.S. side that has made electric power the largest money maker. This has been made possible in part through the use of water flowing from Canada into the U.S. And Canada has not been compensated for this number one money generator for the American side. Finally, let's look at number four. A schedule needs to be identified to enable ongoing negotiations and changes. The 60-year period is totally inadequate. Uh, for example, perhaps a five-year uh, period might be more appropriate. Uh, our planet and water needs are changing. Therefore, shorter times between negotiation sessions are essential. So, Mr. American no Negotiator, uh, how does a shorter time period between uh, negotiation uh, meetings uh, sound uh, to you? Uh, you know, that would be a good idea. That would give us a little more opportunity to talk about uh, flood control. But you know, we wouldn't have to talk about flood control. Uh, you Canadians know how to build pipelines. If you uh, Canadians built a pipeline, uh, water pipeline over onto your dried out prairies of uh, Saskatchewan and Alberta, and uh, put water over there. Uh, we wouldn't have such a big problem with water. Or, uh, let's see, M maybe I said the wrong thing. Uh, whoa, just wait, uh, here comes uh, an alert from my negotiation team. It says, uh, attention, alert, uh, delete previous comment by U.S. negotiator. Uh, yeah, well, uh, I uh, guess that would not be a good idea. I apologize. After uh, talking to quite a few people uh, across the Canadian uh, Columbia Basin, 
uh, we came up uh, with the uh, 14 areas that need to be negotiated in the, the upcoming uh, water negotiations with the U.S. The items uh, for negotiation are listed uh, on the left hand side. These items were discussed in uh, the video. How well did we do on them? Did we fail? Uh, was it an okay start? Uh, that uh, at least we got started on the negotiation on that item or was it quite okay we're satisfied with it uh, which of those three would we check off well stay tuned to uh, this website I go travel with Don Barnett and we'll check out and see how we did on each of these uh, during the uh, negotiations uh, we wanted the uh, perpetuity and uh, Canadian entitlement uh, terms uh, that uh, are not necessary and are demeaning. We wanted them removed from the negotiations. We want to look at the big picture. We wanted the principle of national integrity upheld by both sides. Flood control. How did we do there? And then we talk about money. How well did we do for uh, payments for hydro, for the inland seaway enjoyed by the U.S., and the value to uh, American irrigation and agriculture from the Columbia Basin waters from Canada. Water storage, what is it worth? What is the value of it? Uh, the ecosystem, how well did we do on that? I hope better than last time. Uh, the uh, question of equal dam control uh, needs to be corrected. Can we be successful? Uh, the resale of water to California and Arizona, for example, and the resale of power. It's going on. Uh, how is Canada compensated for this resale profit enjoyed by the U.S.? And were we successful in getting a shorter time period between negotiation points? All right, uh, as I said, Come back, stay tuned in. Uh, I go travel with Don Barnett is the website dot com, and uh, we'll just check out on how we made out on each of these items. We are going uh, to end this session uh, by uh, saying uh, the same thing that the beaver said to the tree that he had just uh, gnawed down. What uh, did the beaver say? So long. It has been a real pleasure knowing you. Water, water everywhere. Wake up Canada or there will not be a drop left to drink. Au revoir for now, but we are coming back. This is I Go Travel with DonBarnett.com.